worked at my little summer job and I tried to save up all the money I could because as you guys will find out, once you start freshman year, you're really not, you really don't have an income. The money you have right then is the money that you're going to have for the rest of that semester. So that's why you need to make sure you save up. And I also put this apply to scholarships, apply to as many scholarships as you can, simply because if you get too much grant money, you get it for yourself. So it's a really good um, thing to do. Um, also, college is a big, big, big investment. I mean, big adjustment. When I first got on the campus, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm all by myself. What am I supposed to do with myself? And everything started out great, of course, you know how it goes. Um, but then it got time for the first midterm season to come up. And that's when everybody, especially the freshmen, start to freak out because we don't know the type of study skills that are useful in college. So, because in high school, I would just study the, I'm not gonna lie, I studied the night before, and in, in high school, that, that'll fly by. But in college, that won't work. So you gotta make sure one of the first things you do is to figure out what study skills are best for you um, to be successful. And going off of that, get academic help if you need it. For example, Pitt has, they have some, a tutoring program or something um, where it's actual students that have taken the classes you are taking and they help you with it, with whatever you have going on, whether it's preparing for a test or a project or anything like that, um, and it's free. So if you can find free help, you are going to want to use it because there's going to be at least one subject or one class where you don't know what's going on or how to study or anything like that. Along with the academic help, mental health is very, very, very important. And I didn't learn this until I was in like a sophomore year of college. Um, oh, let me turn on my fan, it's hot in here. Yes, so mental health is really important. Most colleges have a student counseling center and um, I'm assuming most of y'all are all uh, black kids or kids of color. Yeah, okay. Um, so it can be scary going in there at first, I'll tell you. I took forever to go in. And when you first go, sometimes it could be a little invalidating um, because the medical sector, um, likes to not listen to black people's pain and stuff like that. But don't give up if you really think you need mental health because had I got all that figured out earlier in my life, I wouldn't have had as many issues as I have, well had um, last year and stuff before that. Um, another thing is you're gonna have an orientation week or orientation weekend or something, hopefully um, once Corona is done. And that's when you'll have an activity fair and you'll walk through and see all these different clubs and um, other groups and stuff. Like it's crazy. There's a whole breadth of stuff. Like there's a um, Quidditch club at Pitt. And now I'm pretty sure they have a spike ball club because that started getting really popular. So yeah, explore as many clubs as you can right now because once you hit sophomore year, well, once you hit the second part of freshman year, it's, time is going to start getting less and less. And this also is a good time to socialize um, because, like I said, it's kind of hard to make friends in classes because you get there, it might be 9 a.m., everybody's in sweatpants and they still got the crust in their eye. Nobody really feels like talking. So <laughs> that time right before you start actual classes is a really big time for when people find their friends or was gonna be like their friend group for freshman year at least. Um, so yeah, and then, so I, my first year I stayed in Nordenburg and I'm sure a lot of you have seen it cause it's really near the bus station that y'all usually go to. Um, and it was just full of all these females and there across the hall, there were guys and let me tell you, community bathrooms are not fun at all. 
because what one person does affects everybody. So um, make sure you start trying to accustom yourself to having to deal with um, a bunch of hair on the floor and nastiness, especially if you're a girl, because girls' bathrooms, especially community bathrooms, gross. They are so bad. Even when they get cleaned, it's just like girls are gross. <laughs> um, are there questions? Because I saw that flag. Well, Brea said they are too old for that. <laughs> they are too old for that, but they're also too old to not know how to do their laundry, which is also a thing that um, happens a lot. Yeah. Um, so, so I kind of did it so like I'm just I like talking, so I put these little bullet points just to remind myself. But if y'all got any questions, just let me know because I'll just keep going. <laughs> Um, so sleep, 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 sleep. The reason I put it, is there a it, question? There is another question. How did you learn to adjust to the bathrooms? Um, so the first thing I did was I kind of did a little research before school to try and see what other people's experiences were like. And so that's where I find out I need to get a good size bathroom caddy because it's going to hold everything you need to go to the bathroom, toothbrush, toothpaste. So if you like a rag and a loofah, they both got to go in there. Um, anything else you need in the bathroom when you shower or when you're like doing your face in, by the sink has to go in your caddy. And always leave the stuff in there because you're going to be real mad if you get there and you're missing your soap. And you're like, well, I'm not about to go back in my room. So it's a really, it's a real um, hard thing to do. And another thing is, you just got to get used to uh, dirtiness, honestly. <laughs> like if you have siblings, you kind of get already what it's like. But that dirtiness and the way <laughs> the things I've seen, there's really no way to get used to that except just picture the worst possible thing <laughs> that a bathroom could look like and keep that in your head because it won't be as bad as that, but it'll be bad. Nikoye is saying that he, that's going to be tough for him because he's the last one in the house. So I barely share a bathroom. Um, if I don't know if you're an only child, but I know Catrice being an only child, that was definitely a struggle. And what she's saying is so right because they are nasty. It's like you can get in the shower and there's hair in there. Um, or Ooh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Or or you go into the bathroom and somebody didn't flush the toilet or and it's oh. everything. Yeah, or Rebrea saying, ew. <laughs> what is that? Oh is that wrong? Um, so <laughs> a storm just started. So so hopefully everything's okay and I don't have to evacuate. Um <clears throat> since I'm in North Carolina. Oh gosh. Um Nikoya, yeah. You might, you might want to start sleeping over your friends' houses to get used to it because I, I've seen the guy's bathroom too, and it's no better, no better. And I think, you know, what I did for Catrice was, of course, all the Clorox wipes in the world. Oh, the yes. Clorox, the Lysol. Clorox bleach spray, Lysol. Shower um, shoes. Yes. Shower shoes. There will people, you'll see people that don't wear them, don't do that all type of fungus and stuff be in there because everybody shares the showers and you don't know what they were doing in there before you went in there. Wear shower shoes. You can get a cheap pair of flip-flops and that'll work perfectly, honestly. Um, also, a robe can come in handy if you are in a type of room where you don't really have any separation from your roommate because um, a lot of the time I would go take a shower, but my roommate would still be in there and I'll be like, uh, well, I want to put on lotion and stuff. So what am I supposed to do? So I had to, you know, put on my robe and start maneuvering. So stuff like that um, is really important to getting adjusted to that communal bathroom, unless you get lucky and you don't have a communal bathroom. Oh, another thing about. Hmm? That doesn't happen frequently. No, no, you would. You have to get real lucky to not have a communal bathroom as a freshman. Freshman. You can get a nice dorm, but the bathrooms will not be singles. Um, and having to live with a bunch of people on the same floor also relates to sleep. So in high school, I know that y'all probably go to bed all late because I remember I did. And you could survive off of like five or six hours of sleep. 
and you'll be good. You can function, you'll be tired, but you get over it. In college, that won't work at all um, because you'll start off being okay, you know, before everything gets too hard. But then once they start piling all that work on, um, it's, it's going to be hard. There were days where I would stay up until 3 a.m., 4 a.m., doing schoolwork and doing readings. And I realized that I really wasn't taking in anything after about 12 a.m. And then I would wake up from my 9 a.m. Spanish class the next day and be tired, walking, looking real crazy. And it's kind of hard to speak Spanish when you can barely uh, function without any sleep. And sleep deprivation is a real, real thing. <clears throat> so get sleep as much as you can. Um, it might be loud on your floor because people are inconsiderate. And that's another thing you're going to have to get adjusted to if you're not used to um, being somewhere where it can be loud all the time, especially in a city campus like Pitt. Um, you hear a lot of construction going on and stuff a lot. Um, yeah. Like it's just sleep. I can't. I can't tell y'all sleep. You have to get sleep. <laughs> so this second point, I just wanted to bring this up because I know y'all gonna party. Everybody parties, but you gotta balance the fun with the play. So you gotta get your work done because in college there's no there's no waiting to the last minute. If you got a paper due the next day at eleven fifty nine, you should have started it last week because you will think, oh, I got time, and then it'll just come up on you out of nowhere. And college professors can be nice, but they're also not like high school teachers. They're like, well, you had all this time to do it, so what happened? Like, why did you turn it in late? Why didn't you turn it in on time? And if you don't got a really, really, really good reason, it's not happening. And most teachers take away one letter grade um, per 24 hours that is late. So even if it's late by like a couple minutes, that's a letter grade. And there aren't that many assignments in the grade book in college. So you need every point you can get. So if you wanna go have fun, I used to like plan like one or two weekends a month that I would go out and have fun with my friends. But then the rest of the time, I would try to get some of my work done because during the week you're going from class to class, trying to figure out when you're gonna eat, where you're gonna eat, you're trying to talk to people. It's just a lot to balance. So balancing the fun with the play is really, really important to keeping your grades up because a lot of people have trouble freshman year. Um, I already said about saving your money because I ended up broke. I had like $3 by the end of my first semester freshman year. Um, and it was Christmas time, not, a not the best place to be in. Um, and find your people. And what I mean by that is you can find your friends, yeah, but find the Black people. Because Black people, especially on PWI campuses, will um, we all look out for each other. So we have a Black Pit group chat right now, and we have a Black Pit 21 group chat. And you can basically find out everything that's going on just between those two group chats. If you need a roommate and you put it on there, you'll probably find a roommate. If you want somebody to sublease your apartment, you can do that. If you wanna um, try to get people to answer your survey, if you end up in a class where you gotta do a survey, you can put it in there and people will help you out. So stuff like that is really, really important, especially for minority groups, because um, having people that have been through what you've been through and that look like you, especially if racial stuff comes up, like it happened during, while I was there with the shooting and, the, and everything, that's gonna be really important because you might be really far away from home and you don't know what's going on. So other people that do know what's going on, um, invaluable, very invaluable. Um, any questions about freshman year? Who uh, Rebrea said that's a lot. So how did you? Um, I was writing down notes and then I lost my paper. How did you navigate? Um, or first off, does Pitt have like learning communities? Did you belong to a learning community? And if so, can you explain that as well? 
um, as far as connecting to some of those, um, the, the Black student associations and things like that? Yeah, so I wasn't personally in a learning community, but my building, the third floor was a learning community. Um, and that can be a really big help too, because it automatically gives you a group of people that you can try to rely on and that have at least one similar interest because um, those groups are made up of people that have at least that one similar interest. Like there was like a music, a music learning community. And that was the one that was in my building. Mm -hmm. And you got all different types. Um, so you usually have, you usually go about getting into those when you're applying for housing. So it'll come up somewhere along the way, like, do you want to be in a living learning community? And you can say yes or no. Um, some schools make you do other stuff to get into it, or sometimes they'll just automatically put you into whichever one is your first choice, depending on who comes first. Right. Um, what was the other part of it? Um, I, I was saying explain what it is and were you a part of one. Would you recommend a learning community or, um, I mean, I know, and I'm saying this because I know um, it, they are competitive to get in. They only take a certain number of students. So would you recommend that for a freshman? Um, they're nice if you really are nervous about being able to make friends and talking to people at college, but they can be a lot of work because you don't join and then you're just in it. If you join it, you have to go to certain events and do certain things that go along with whatever the theme of your living learning community is. So that's why um, activities fairs are real important because that's where you find all of the student organizations. That's where you find the black student organization. There's um, a Caribbean and Latin American one that we have. There's an African student association. And so we all basically see each other at these different events because everybody knows each other. Some people are on boards for multiple things. So that's how you really find that tight knit community um, that first year. Okay, awesome. Come on it, let me go. <laughs> so my sophomore year, once again, I didn't sleep. That's why I keep telling y'all to sleep because it really starts to take a toll on you physically um, and emotionally because freshman year, sophomore year, and sophomore year, I got the flu both years because kids are nasty um, and also no sleep. Sleep, without sleep, your immune system doesn't work as well. You can't focus as well. A lot of stuff doesn't work if you don't get no sleep. So sleep. Also, you will have more chances to register for classes that you really wanted because as freshmen, you kind of get the last pick. But as a sophomore, you got a little more, you got a little more wiggle room. So if you are not a morning person, this is when you need to try to not get those morning classes. And if you are a morning person, just get the morning classes and get them out the way because you would rather just be done and then have the rest of the day to do work or something then have to be like, oh, I got to go to this evening class that's 6 to 8.30, which is awful, I'll tell you. Evening classes aren't the best, but you get through it. <laughs> um, point number two, I didn't listen to this because I was like, oh, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Don't room with your friends. I, I'm so serious. Do not room with your friends. Even if it's somebody you met at college, don't room with them because I'm telling you, you won't like them. The friends that I room with in college, I don't even talk to anymore. We are not friends anymore. And if you end up living with them and you'll find out y'all personalities aren't as compatible as you thought, that's a whole year where you're kind of stuck in a bad situation. And speaking from experience, that bad situation can is really awkward and it sucks having to deal with it and not being able to do anything to get out of it. So don't room with your friends. If it's somebody you kind of like, that's more okay. But if that's your friend, don't room with them. Um, going along with that, self-care. Not rooming with your friends is self-care because that mental is important. So you got to take time for yourself, even in between all this busyness. Because if you don't, you're going to start burning out real quick. Um, so like... You could take breaks in between doing work. Like I would always tell myself, okay, 
let me do work for like 45 minutes and then I'll take a break and go on Instagram for like 10 minutes and then you go back. Um, so like do little stuff like that throughout the day or while you're doing your work that you just doing for you and doing for fun because otherwise it can be real easy to get overwhelmed. Um, and once you get overwhelmed, you get frustrated and it's just a whole cycle that can make stuff a lot easier. Oh wait, the chat. Is it uh, easy? asking about tutors. Is it easy to get tutors? Oh, there's a couple. Um, so the first one is, is it easy to get tutors or a group of people willing to schedule days to help each other out? Um, so yes to both and I'll explain it. So it's pretty easy to get a tutor on campuses that are pretty like medium to large. I'm not so sure about small campuses because they always have some type of um, peer teaching. Like they'll have peer tutors that you can find and you can add, they, they're gonna give you all this information your first week while you're there usually. If not, look for a sophomore or a junior and they'll be able to tell you exactly where to go. Um, so that's the reason the way I found my tutor and they just tell you be like what subject do you need and then they'll connect you with somebody that recently took that subject sometimes even with the same professor um, and professors can be very different so that part is important and yeah there's a lot of study groups that happen in college in Hillman before corona again people would be in there all night and like combining tables together and it would be a big group studying for some exam they have the next day. Um, we use a lot of group me's. So somebody might make a group me for one of your classes and they'll be like, hey, I'm about to study at Hillman. Anybody wanna pull up? And people will be like, yeah, let's have a study session. And all of a sudden you got a study session and anything you were confused about, more than likely somebody else done figured out, but you also gotta be careful because sometimes people try to act like they know more than they do. Um, so yeah. Look for those group, those group texts. Like it'll suck because group me is real aggravating, but comes in handy. So do your um, instructors have like supplemental instruction and TIs that are available to TAs, I'm sorry, <laughs> TAs that are available to schedule help, especially during COVID. And I kind of hope that it continues after COVID. We can just go online and just book that person's time or something. Um. So I'm not sure about it with COVID because um, none of my classes really have TAs at this point. Okay. But before, like before everything, there would usually be, if it was a big, big class, like if you were in like bio one, there would be like 10 TAs, undergraduate TAs that probably took it last semester, um, usually with that same professor because they're usually handpicked mm -hmm. and they'll schedule office hours or drop in times and that's usually where you get the most of your help because if you try to go to a professor's office hours, you can't, you might get to talk to them, but depending on how many people want to talk to them, you won't be able to get your question in properly and you'll just have wasted all that time waiting. And then you're like, oh crap, got to get to my next class. Didn't get to go to lunch. Yeah. So yeah, TAs are usually what's, what's going to be best for you. And they make study sessions. They'll set up study sessions. Those are really helpful because they know exactly what's on the test. Like they know they know exactly what's on the test. Yeah, our, her current CEC intern is actually a TA for bio. Um, she, yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, she's, she does freshman bio. So it, that's why I was asking, because she, I think that's what she's doing now. She'll be back at five o'clock, but she has that class from four to five, but, um, or that time to, um, you know, provide, uh, you know, tutoring. So another question is, how is it really possible to get enough sleep for college, especially if you have a job when you're not in class or doing schoolwork? Um, so at least for those first two years, if you can like, if you can swing it, not everybody can, can do this, but at least off freshman year, try not to get a job. Like you don't really want one yet because you just starting to adjust to the college life and being basically completely on your own with stuff, aside from maybe getting some money help sometimes. Um, sophomore year, I, I, I did school to career, so it's good to do something that is connected to what you wanna do after you graduate or something that won't take up too, too much time or that will be too taxing, like a campus job, working in the library, 
a lot of people would do that and still be able to get their work done while they're doing it. Um, I was a, um, what is it called? I was a lab monitor. So all I would do was just sit behind a desk in the different computer labs. And if somebody had a question, I would answer it. But besides that, all I had to do was walk around like once an hour and the rest of the time I finished my homework. So that's when I got a lot of my schoolwork done. But if you can't afford to not get a job after that first year, yeah, you just you just got to find something that somewhere or how you can get some work done while you're doing it. Because if it's something like if you have to get a job at a restaurant, it's going to be hard to balance that with trying to get your classes and essays and different exam studies um, done. And yeah, yeah, it is hard to get enough sleep. But if you try, you usually get more than if you just be like, well, forget it. <laughs> so, so yeah. And weekends are important for sleep too. Um, sleep, cleaning your room and laundry. Um, the other one, <laughs> the other question is what dorm did you live in again? Um, my freshman year, I lived in Nordenburg. And then for the next two years before everything happened with Corona last year, I was in um, Ruskin Hall, which is an apartment style living hall. Nordenburg and Ruskin Hall? And Ruskin. Ruskin? Mm-hmm. Um, Rebrea asked, do you ever get a break or free time other than twice a month because school work every day is very stressful? Um, so that's another thing about being in college. For them, you pick your classes. It's kind of restricted depending on what, what year you are, but you pick your classes. So you need to figure out how you can schedule it so that you got breaks. Like I would have, there was that one, my freshman and sophomore year, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I had three classes in a row, but then I was done. And so I had a big gap between that and if I had like a little kind of evening class at four, um, I had all that time to either chill, take a nap. I, I took a nap a lot. <laughs> um, get some work done, talk to your friends, just whatever you want to do during that free time. But you got to schedule it within your classes because aside from that, and um, if your school does self-care days, if they start keep doing those, they can be helpful, but Pitt only gave us two and they think that's the equivalent to spring break. So it's really kind of, they really kind of just like don't care. So you got to schedule classes in a way that'll let you get those gaps. Uh, I think because of COVID, because a lot of schools did the same thing. Um, and what Miss Destiny is referring to is spring break was eliminated because you all go on spring break in a week or so and you get a week off. But college students have to go back home. So since they're not, you know, just as a Pitt student, you go back home to California or Texas or Florida, wherever it is. And then you have to be in quarantine. You have to be tested again, go through all that bringing whatever you had at home back on campus. So they eliminated spring break and gave them mental health days. Did you all get two? Yeah, we only got two. Could it, I, I really needed a lot out. more. Yeah, it, yeah. There was one in like the middle of, like the beginning slash middle of February. And then our next one is March 23rd. So it doesn't seem like that's a lot of time, but it's a lot of time, especially if for some reason they still have mostly online classes next year. Online classes are a whole different breed. If you can't avoid them, unless you're good at it, you know, everybody got their own stuff. I would try not to because it's it's just really difficult doing online classes. I always get distracted. I'll be doing all types of other stuff when I'm supposed to be in class and that's bad. Um, but as a senior, I didn't kind of built up study strategies to kind of overcome that. And you might not necessarily have those yet at that point. Um, and for the second question from Rebrea, Rebrea. you said it was? Rebrea. Oh, Rebrea, sorry. Um, so freshman and sophomore year, I had classes every day because most schools will have classes that are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday. And it depends on what your major is, what your classes are going to usually be like. I'm a psych major, so most of my classes were like an hour and 15 minutes twice a week. So once I got done with all my like little intro classes, um, the only time I had classes was either Monday and Wednesday or Tuesday and Thursday. And I didn't have any more classes on Friday ever again. 
because I didn't like it and I could get away with this. So I was like, let's do it. <laughs> so you do get to pick your schedule. Some places will do it where they'll help sophomores out or um, if it's a really specific major, like my sister um, is a fashion design major, they don't get to pick their schedules because they have a whole thing planned out for them and exactly what they got to do every year. So it kind of depends, but for the most part, you, you pick your own classes. And how do you, I mean, one of the things as far as scheduling, um, what advice do you have? Because I always say don't take stats or econ or organic chemistry with some, together. <laughs> you know, so what about scheduling? Um, so what I had to do was, and it, it was like really aggravating because I like to just go with the flow, but I had to make a list of the classes that I expected to take over the next couple of years. And I'll be like, okay, what gen eds do I have to fill um, that I don't already, didn't already do? And I will put that in and try and kind of figure it out. Um, why did I lose my train of thought? Schedule. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you want to, for the most part, you want to either try to get your gen eds out the way first, if you don't know what you want to do yet and you're undeclared. Um, but if you know what you want to do, you can either wait later in your career because those gen eds are usually easy um or get them out the way uh but yeah scheduling you really just got to plan it out like I have to write it out see what you have to do for your major see what classes you want to do for your gen eds and look at what you got and see if you can figure out a way where you can do bio one first semester and bio two next semester but you don't have to do chem until junior year it usually works out sadly that you you might have bio one and chem two or bio two and chem one at the same time because it's just hard to spread those out so you only have one per semester unless you come in with a lot of credits but you just you it's yeah <laughs> you, it's a juggle now in your freshman year yeah, in your freshman year, did you meet with your advisor to plan out your four-year schedule, or is that something you had to do on your own? Um, so I had to do that on my own, because before you declare your major, you get a more general advisor, and, you know, they care, but they got probably 500 other students to deal with at a big school, and at a medium school, at least 200 or 250, and they're not all necessarily freshmen. So before you declare, you just got a general advisor and they'll help you out and tell you what you got to get done, um, what you still need to complete, but they're not as invested as your major advisor is going to be. Mm -hmm. Now, once you get that major advisor, that's your person. You got to stick with them because they know everything. They'll And that's when you'll start getting it planned out and they'll help you plan it out. They'll be like, okay, so you still got this credit. And then they'll pull up a list of classes. And my advisor was like, so do any of these look interesting? And I was like, yeah, let's do that one. Because there was one time my junior year that I couldn't get into classes that I needed. And so I was like, I don't know what to do. And so I met with my advisor and she found some psych classes that I could get into that were better than what I thought I was going to get. Mm -hmm. um, so they know everything. They can help you get internships. They can help you find other research opportunities and stuff like that because they um they just they they get all the resources really right um so yeah major major your major advisor is the one that's really going to help you out more than your general advisor awesome oh. thank you no problem um well that kind of covered the declare your major if you know what you want to do you can declare your major um, your first semester sophomore year. They don't really let you do it freshman year in most places. Mm. But if not, just start thinking about it. Um, take some classes that are like in a bunch of different subjects to see which one you like more. Because the sooner you can declare and be sure, um, which can be hard, it, the better. Because if you have to end up switching halfway through, it's possible, but it's a lot of work. Because then you got to get a new major advisor and you got to you might have to do different gen eds if it's in a different school within the college and stuff like that. Um, if you all don't know what gen ed is, can you put your hand oh, up? Or can yeah. you, if you want to know what gen ed is, because 
I, I know what it is, but I just want to make sure, especially for our, you know, juniors that are on the call on the Zoom. Oh, yeah, I completely forgot. I can't see if they raised their hand. So did I, anybody? I didn't see anybody raise their hand. So I guess everybody knows what a gen ed is. If y'all don't know what it is, you you should ask because those make up the bulk of what your credits are going to be. And, the, and those are those classes that you'll like to take. I mean, if, you know, when yeah. you double major or if you have a, a minor, you want to, you know, those are those classes that are the fun ones sometimes. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's your downtime. Yes. Because your gen eds, I mean, they give you a certain list of which, what fulfills each one, but it's a pretty big list. Like I'm taking human sexuality now and that fulfills one of my gen eds. And I got to choose that just for fun. I didn't have to take it for my major or anything. It was just because I wanted to do it so that I didn't um, burn out from the major classes. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, like your genets are basically what's going to like make you feel a little less overwhelmed because usually they're pretty easy. Like history of jazz is the number one um, genet taken for, I think like the arts requirement at Pitt and it's a really easy class. Everybody takes it. You don't really got to do much. So stuff like that can really help your load just to do that. Um, and if you do that, and then you might have some heavy classes, like um, four credit classes or three credit classes that are that have like a lab, those are the gen eds are going to help you out. Um, and then um, a lot of people struggle freshman year. It, I struggle too, like it's gonna happen. You might get your first, if you have good grades, it might be the time where you get your first D, you get your first F, you get your first C. And you gotta look at it, maybe cry about it a little bit. And then you gotta you gotta move on because usually um, professors will let you either drop an exam or drop a certain amount of quizzes. So if you mess up one exam, it's not the end of the world. You got the other three exams to help make it up. But you got to realize that if something didn't go right, then you got to figure out what you need to do to make it go right. Because you're the only one that's really like looking out for you when you're in college. Nobody else like really care cares. Like they care, but you are your, you the only cheerleader for you. Um, and oh, there's this thing called W classes that y'all are going to hear about. And that's basically when you get um, a withdrawal on your transcript. And I wouldn't talk about it now because there's a lot of fear about them. But if you're, let's say you're in a class and add drop period, the period where you can get rid of classes and add them with no repercussions. Um, after that ends, if you're in a class and you failed the first exam, you failed your essay and you're just not doing good, it's way better, way, way better to either get that W and withdraw from the class than to keep that really bad grade that's going to be stuck on your GPA. Because you can explain away a W if you're applying for a job or if you're applying for some whatever program or PhD program, master program, whatever. You can explain that away if it's a good reason to get a W. But if you just messed up and was like, oh, no, I should have studied more and you withdraw, they're not going to take that. So Ws can be good because you can retake the class and get it taken off. Um, but don't overuse it or it's going to look really bad on your transcript. Do they stay W's? Because I remember once upon a time, W's, um, if because it's designed so that you can go back and retake it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't retake that class, does that W turn into a grade? Um, I'm pretty sure if you don't take the class, it stays a W and it's okay. just going to stay on your, your transcript unless you finally decide to retake it. Okay. Oh, and pass fail is also a thing. You can't do it with um, major classes usually, but if it's a class that you know you're not good at, like you're like, I need to take chem for my gen ed, but I'm not really good at chem. You can take pass fail because all you have to get is a C plus or higher, and that's a pass and it won't affect your GPA. Um, and if you get a D or a F, I mean, you don't pass, but it still doesn't affect your GPA. So either way, it's kind of win-win. Um, and it will make you feel a lot better once you get to a, start, a certain point in college. <laughs> okay, yeah, just want to make sure there was nothing in the chat. Work. Okay, so junior year. For any of y'all that are juniors in high school, um, 
I remember that time. That's when you got to figure out everything that's going on, take all these tests. Junior year of college isn't exactly like that, but um, a lot you still have a lot of stuff that you got to figure out by junior year. By junior year is usually when you want to have your major set and declared, because after this point, it's going to be hard to switch. Um, it can be possible, but you it'll be hard, and sometimes you have to use extra years. And if you're on a scholarship, you only get four four years worth of money. So if you got to stay an extra semester, it's coming out of your pocket. Um, da -da 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 -da. Self care still important, still important junior year, especially junior year, because as you can see with the meme, things can go really really bad really quick. Be like I was in the middle of my second semester of junior year when we had to just switch everything and go home all of a sudden um, and just realize and like figure out how to do online classes. Like I didn't have Zoom. I didn't have no type of, really have any type of setup that was like good for that. So that completely took you for a loop. Um, and things like that will happen junior year, not COVID, <laughs> of course, but that's when things will start to, you'll start to realize like, oh crap, it's, I'm, I'm a junior next year. I'm done. What do I, what am I doing? So the summer before the summer after junior year is when you want to start thinking about getting internships, getting a research position, or you can just do some other job that connects to either your major or what you want to do, but start doing something that you can put on your resume. Um, because after like junior year, they don't want to see that high school stuff anymore. They do not care. So if you don't have anything to put on your resume, it's going to be blank. <laughs> and that that won't help at all. Um, also, make sure you're on track. Like I said earlier, like you have advisors who usually keep you on track, but you need to make sure yourself too, because you're the only one that knows everything you have going on. So if you know that you got um, a family vacation coming up next week, and the week after that, you have a test, a big test. OK, make sure that you study before you leave um, for that uh, vacation. Or if you know that next semester you want to study abroad, but you have to get this class done beforehand, you need to get that class done because you'd only want to know if you're going to have something going on that could change the track that you're on. Um, and then, yeah, so my junior year, Sophomore year, I did the school to career thing, which was really, really great. If you go to Pitt, highly recommend. They pay for your housing. You meet cool people, of course. Um, and it's just nice as an introduction into having to juggle a job and college work. So it kind of like, you know, softly scooted me in there. And I got a lot of good skills that I still use now. Um, so junior year, after I started learning how to balance all that, I got kind of two jobs. Don't recommend that. That was a bad idea, but um, it happened. And so I was a undergraduate research assistant in Dr. Forbes' Effective Neuroscience and Developmental Psychopathology Lab. Um, and as long as the, the name of the lab is, that's how complicated everything was because you have to, they give you basically the grunt work, but it's still interesting. Um, if you want to do anything that involves research, you've got to, got to, got to get research experience while you're in school. Um, and then, like I said, an on-campus job is the best type of job to get. If it's in Pennsylvania, they don't pay you that good um, because the minimum wage there is kind of crazy. But in other places, it's, it's a pretty good thing to have. Like, it look good. <laughs> it's nice when you get that $150 in your account after two weeks and you're like, oh, yes. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you broke, that 150 seems like everything, especially if you want to go do something like um, you want to go to a concert with your friends. Like people will go to concerts. Sometimes you got to pay for parties. You might have to pay for your Uber if you go to a party. So stuff like that, um, being able to have that money, even if it's really little compared to what you might make in high school with your job, it helps better than anything else that you're going to have. Mm, I think that's all I had to say about junior year. 
And then senior year, which is where I'm at right now. Um, and once again, the meme that I put is very true because you start off like, oh, let's do this. It's gonna be a new experience, let's go. And it is like that. But by the end, you're gonna have you're gonna have some dents. You're gonna have a little uh little bit of scars from having to do all that adjustment and everybody has bad periods and all that types of stuff. Um, so that's what that big question mark is. Like <laughs> senior year is good, but it's also like you it's your last year to figure out what you're gonna do. Because after you graduate, people are like, okay, you're an adult. So what are you doing? And if you don't have an answer to that question, um, that's that's not the best thing in the world, but you might still be able to get through it if you believe in yourself. <laughs> so the question mark is also for what are you doing that summer after you graduate? Some people will do, um, if you wanna do something around research, like I wanted to do the PhD program, um, there's a lot of research opportunities over the summer where you can get really good experience and sometimes they'll pay you sometimes they won't pay you. Um, so yeah, you got to start figuring out what you're doing after, because you got to do something after senior year, whether it's going into a job, like some people get their jobs right away, but most people don't because the industry is really bad right now. So just do something to make yourself look like a better candidate for whenever you get that interview for that job, or whenever you apply for whatever graduate school or other program that you want to get into. Um, so senioritis, if you're a senior in high school, you probably already feel this, but senioritis is for the weekends in college. You cannot have senioritis because you not doing work in college is just going to be a F. Like you only, you get four essays and maybe two tests. And if you don't do one of those and you just get a flat out zero, you, it's going to, you're going to really struggle to bring that grade back up. It's, it's almost impossible. Um, honestly. But, you know, if you work really hard, you never know. It might happen. Second, you got to finish strong. <laughs> finish strong. Um, so I already finished my major technically, so I'm not taking any major classes. But I didn't finish my Spanish minor. So I have to deal with um, taking these higher level Spanish classes through a computer. And Spanish is... Um, it's very important to do the talking in Spanish. So it's been really hard to get that under control, but you gotta figure out a way to, to make it work. If you got gen eds left, don't pick hard gen eds. Do not pick hard gen eds. Don't be like, oh, let me pick this really hard anthropology class because it seems cool. No, 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 no. Pick something you're interested in, but don't, don't overwhelm yourself because um, if it hadn't been for COVID, senior year is pretty fun like that's your last year to hang with your friends a lot of people go on spring break trips that year um you're gonna get recognized for different stuff throughout the year um and it's just a good year it's fun so you want to try to have as much as little weight on your back as possible by the end um and have fun during it because that's the last semester you get before you got to start really figuring out how to uh, pay bills and stuff like that, that adult and stuff that I know nothing about yet. Uh, yeah, any questions? Oops, were there any questions? I don't see any more questions in the, in the chat now. Okay, and then um, my future plans, Ms. Carla already really, for the most part, talked about them but I'm doing a gap year at City Year Columbia. I applied for some clinical PhD programs, which is what I wanna do um, this year, but it can be hard to get in as a recent undergrad graduate. So I decided to do City Year, which is a program that is basically doing kind of what I did at S2C, where I'm gonna be tutoring and I'll be in schools, working with kids and helping them stay on track and kind of be like a mentor slash big sibling to them um, in an inner city, in a, in a big public city. Um, so that can be really helpful because it'll give you good experience. Um, you'll make a lot of good connections. So stuff like this, if you don't get into what you want right after, things like programs like this can be really helpful and still feel pretty fulfilling. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, the plan is to apply to a PhD program um, if anybody's thinking about it already, 
I can tell you kind of what it's like to apply, but it might change by the time you get there. Um, and one reason I decided to go into this field and get my PhD, because I could only get a master's and still do the same thing, is because there are still a lot of fields in the social sciences that lack diversity and it's still been really harmful to our populations. So for psychology specifically, you got your therapists and counselors and stuff, but it can be hard for the counselor to kind of empathize with you, sympathize with you and understand some of the things you're going to, you're going through if they're not like you, if they don't look like you. Um, so think about getting into a field where there's not a lot of black people if you think um, you might like that. Um, and then while I'm doing my PhD, I'm also gonna be trying to fix some other problems and do non-weird research with minority populations. Um, if, if you take any psych classes, you're gonna see weirdo, this weird thing. So I'll tell you what it is. If you don't remember, you're gonna, you're gonna see it again. But it basically stands for um, white, uh, what am I saying? White, European, industrialized, um, rich and developed countries and people. So these are the studies, these are the majority of the studies that happen um, for psychology, sociology, anthropology, anything that basically you interact with people to get um, your, your numbers. So if you can do anything that can help you get, like help us get rid of this so that we can get some of the information we need to learn how to, you know, get the mental health help that um, black people really don't talk about yet or just to fix things so that the next generation doesn't have to deal with the same things we do um it, it's it, it's nice and it would be good um always advocate for mental health even if you don't have any mental health issues you never know what nobody anybody else is going through um and especially in the black community we don't nearly talk about it enough but it happens like everybody feels down at times so take care of your mental health because if you don't have your mental health together, you probably won't have your physical health together. And then it'll probably be hard to do schoolwork. Um, and I also plan to work with adolescents from minority populations, kind of like you guys, but not exactly you guys. Um, but that'll be exciting to try to help the next generation. And that's all I got, I think. I love oh, it. and then I love questions. It. So the, the I have a question. Um, the internship that you have, will you be able, since you're going to be there for a year, do you think you'll have an opportunity to do some of the advocacy work that you're, you, you want to pursue? Do you think that'll give you that opportunity where you can maybe create a program or um, have like a mental health Wednesday or something like that at this site? Um, I think, I think definitely, because we'll be in several different schools. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be trying to talk to the kids about it. And now that you mentioned a program, we get to make like our own like little things because sometimes we do our own little teaching sessions. I'm definitely going to do that now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm definitely going to do some advocacy while I'm there. Got to tell all the kids, hey, it's okay. If you got, if you don't think that something that whatever you got going on is how most people feel, it's okay to ask for help, stuff like that. Because um, didn't have that growing up, wish I did. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. Right now, are you still on? Can you hear us? Because right now we just had an entrepreneur competition and yeah. some of the things that you were saying right now had as part of her um, her business idea. Do you want to share that um, right now? My business idea? Yes. Uh, sure. Um, let me think about it. What was it? <laughs> okay, so my idea was to have a website that catered to people of color with mental health issues to raise awareness for because not many people of color either believe in mental health or they think that it's not real and they can get over it. So they don't go to therapists to get help. And the yes. website will cater to them to help find black therapists to talk to, uh, talk to them because sometimes you want to have a therapist who understands you more and has more empathy towards you. That's a really good idea. That could that would be so helpful just in the Pittsburgh area because 
Um, I personally had to start taking therapy because life is hard. And it was really, really hard to find a therapist that you can like connect with. So if you can help people um, get through that or show them like black people can have mental illness too, it's okay. That We need that. So definitely do that. It would be very helpful. And um, I'll spread the word if you do it. So. And she was one of our winners um, in the competition. So I thought it was a great idea. Um, great like idea. I mean, everything that you were saying, it's like mental health is so important, especially in our communities, because we don't think that, um, you know, other people are having the same type of struggles that we are. So, and then when you meet with a, a counselor or a therapist, you may feel that they, they can't relate to you because they're not mm -hmm. uh, in the same background. So that makes it more challenging. So when Raynell, Raynell came up with that idea, I, I can't remember what it was called. I know I came up with a catchy name, like Doctor For You or- Black Doctors For Us. Doctors For Us. Um, Ooh, you know. trademark it. Uh, yes, right now we should do that. <laughs> Let's do our, that's that's good. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, Doctors For Us. Um, so when, when she was talking about it and it was just, you know, the way she put it together was really um, impactful and powerful. So it's, it's in alignment with, you know, some of the things that you want to accomplish too. So I wanted her to share that. But I think that, it, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. I'm excited for you to see, you know, what happens next. That's why I said, can you start your own program? Because I know <laughs> at School to Career, it's like, look, I want to do so-and-so or, you know, encourage you to, you know, to do something um, when you do the Young Lady Seminar and just really getting you to, you know, incorporate that into the day-to-day -day, especially if you're going to work with you know the same group of kids throughout the year maybe it's a like a day or you know one of the sessions or something like that once a week yeah I still talk about that seminar too in my interviews and stuff I'm like yeah I, I put together a seminar or whatever tried to make myself good. look cool it was it very helped. good I was telling Maddie about it Maddie is our, our current CEC intern and she mm -hmm. got to um, be a part of our healthcare panel um, a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, just again, trying to provide those opportunities for our, our interns just to, you know, build that resume and build that experience and exposure. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like when I worked there and doing all that other stuff was so important to where I am now. Like now I got better study habits and I know how to put together a really nice presentation and I have a really nice resume now. Oh, also put, put, put as much on your resume as you can. Like I made Dean's list um, for the last three years. I don't even know if they're going to do a senior year because of what's happening, but stuff like that you can put on there. If you got a good GPA, put your GPA. Um, you can even put certain classes if you think they're relevant to the jobs too. Ugh. Absolutely. So, yeah. All those things are helpful. I mean, it, and college allows you to build that. And um, I think some of the things that you were saying as far as, you know, being selective about your internships and your, your jobs. I mean, working at Mix Up Wendy's is great and you'll make more money, but you're not going to be able to go sit at break time and take an extra half an hour if you're studying for a test. And I know with all of our interns, I'm like, if you got homework, please go do it. These, these kids don't want any help. Go ahead. You do your work, <laughs> you know, because our kids will come in and it's like, I don't have any homework. Okay, we'll do yours. And, and we've always been, you know, very, I think, considerate about, you know, uh, the time that our volunteers spend with us and we don't want it to be wasted, you know, waiting for a student to come up and say, can you help me with my Spanish or, you know, my, my algebra? It's like, you got something to do, wait till they come to you. Don't, <laughs> don't waste an hour um, not getting your work done. I know when I was in college, I worked in the library. I don't even know if I ever shelved the book because I, I <laughs> <laughs> I did, but you know, I know I was able to sit there and spend that time doing my homework. So um as part of your, is it the FASA where you put your work? Um, thank you, Rebrea. Um, Hi. see you tomorrow. Um, do you is it, on the FASA, is that where you ask for the work study opportunity? And is that how it's assigned, or do you do something different when you get to school? Uh, I think on the FAFSA, you put that you would be interested. Mm -hmm. And once they decide whether or not you're eligible, that's when you'll find out all that other stuff. Like if you're eligible, it'll be, it'll usually be in your financial aid package. And it'll be like $5,000 for work study. And then once you find a job that has work study, you just have to talk to somebody. I don't know. I didn't get it. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you get that. Okay. Yeah. For 
for me, even like freshman year, fall semester, I got a uh, work study, like showed up on like my financial aid and stuff. And then in the spring semester, it like didn't show up all of a sudden. So I had to like contact financial aid and be like, what's going on? Like, can you put that back on? So don't be afraid to speak up about that stuff too and talk to your school if you think something's wrong with your financial aid. Cause I had to oh, go yeah. and ask. You're gonna make <laughs> a lot of phone around. calls, a lot of phone calls. Cause financial up. aid always <laughs> messing up. Something's mm-hmm. always messing up. So you got 